Hello and welcome all of you once again. Let's continue with our uh, uh, next topic from the unit four, and uh, probably this is the last point we are discussing from the unit four because the remaining part already we have discussed. So today uh, we will discuss about the remaining uh, deadlock handling strategies. As uh, in the previous lecture, we have discussed the first two deadlock handling strategies. In that we have discussed. uh deadlock prevention and the deadlock avoidance okay so today we'll discuss the remaining two that is the deadlock detection and the recovery and the deadlock ignorance okay so uh, as you know uh, yesterday uh, in the previous lecture we have discussed how about uh, how you can handle the deadlock using the deadlock prevention where we have discussed you have to just uh, violate or the dissatisfy the remaining uh, whatever the four conditions are there which are responsible for the deadlock and if you can dissatisfy the any of the condition out of that four then you can uh, prevent the deadlock where in case of the deadlock avoidance uh, uh, we have discussed uh, uh, you can uh, avoid the deadlock uh, with the help of some uh, specific algorithm and that algorithm is nothing but the banker's algorithm using which you can uh, avoid the deadlock before it occurs Okay, that part yesterday in the yesterday lecture we have discussed. Okay, so today we have to discuss regarding the uh, the remaining uh, two deadlock handling strategies. In that first is the deadlock detection and the recovery, and second as a uh, we have the deadlock ignorance. Okay, so uh, let's uh, discuss first the deadlock detection and the recovery. Then we'll uh, discuss regarding the uh, deadlock. ignorance okay now uh, the as if you compare the previous two techniques with these uh, techniques now in case of the uh, in this technique deadlock detection the approach apply is nothing but uh, not related with the preventing the deadlock or avoiding the deadlock etc here this technique works when the deadlock has already occurred okay so in this approach the operating system does not apply any mechanism to avoid or prevent the deadlock okay so this this particular approach consider that the deadlock has already occurred what deadlock will occur or deadlock has already occurred so in order to get rid of the deadlock operating system periodically check the system for the deadlock understood so in case of the previous two approach we have seen we try to prevent or avoid the deadlock but in this case we are not going to prevent or avoid the deadlock but we will consider will uh, predict that in the system deadlock will definitely going to be occur or deadlock has already occur so that kind of consideration we are going to utilize in this approach and the operating system then uh, periodically time to time used to check the system whether deadlock has occur or the not and that is nothing but the case as a or the approach as a deadlock detection so in this case the operating system uh, never try to avoid or prevent the deadlock but the operating system always check whether deadlock is been happen or not or uh, operating system time to time check the system for occurrence of the deadlock okay and in case the operating system find that that deadlock has occur then operating system apply the deadlock recovery techniques so that is the approach uh, uh, we are we are having that is the deadlock detection as compared with our previous two technique so main task of the operating system here is nothing but the detection of the deadlock okay the third approach is nothing but what detection of the deadlock understood and uh, operating system utilize the different techniques to detect the deadlock understood so there are the various cases for the detection of the deadlock operating system utilize the resource allocation graph uh, in order to do the detection of the deadlock so that everything we are going to see so uh, first thing that you must understood how this approach is different from the previous two approach previous two approach in the sense uh, deadlock prevention we have discussed then deadlock uh, ignorance uh, sorry deadlock avoidance we have discussed 
now in the both of that previous two cases we will uh, operating system time to uh, try, uh, try to avoid or prevent the deadlock means operating system uh, try to uh, avoid or uh, prevent the deadlock in the sense operating system will take care that deadlock should not happen understood but in this case or in this approach operating system uh, don't apply any mechanism or technique to avoid or prevent the deadlock operating system simply consider that in the future the deadlock will deadlock is definitely going to be occur and then operating system in this approach thinks that if, if the deadlock occurs then the techniques of the recovery will be applied to recover from the deadlock understood so in order to in order to recover from the deadlock first it is the necessary thing that the deadlock should be get detected okay so that is the third approach where the deadlock detection is happen so main task of the operating system in this approach is nothing but what detection of the deadlock and it is done by the operating system by periodically checking the computer system time to time checking the computer system for the deadlock okay now how the deadlock can be get detected now for that purpose we have to see the some some uh, techniques are there so in that technique there is a utilization of resource allocation graph is uh, utilized resource allocation graph also i will show you okay so uh, the as i said the main task of the operating system here is nothing but the detection of the deadlock so generally detection of the deadlock is being done in the with the help of the two cases okay so deadlock detection can be done when there are the single instances of each resource type are available and deadlock detection can be done in the second case where there are the multiple instances of each resource type are available okay single instances of each resource type in the sense for example printer so printer is one resource so there is a only one printer that is nothing but the single instance of of each resource type there is a what only one printer is available that is nothing but the single instance of each resource type and if there are the 10 printers are available then it means multiple instances of each resource type for example uh, resource we take the printer if 10 printers are available that that is come under the second case multiple instances of each resource type okay so with the help of the uh, with the help of these two cases the deadlock detection is being done so deadlock detection is done in these two cases in first case where the consideration is done on the single instance of re, uh, each resource type where in the second case multiple instances are considered understood so uh, in these two cases the deadlock detection is done where in the first case where the single instances of each resource type is there in that case detection of cycle is done means detection of cycle whether it is a present or absent if the cycle is present in the resource allocation graph i will show you that with example if the cycle is present in the resource allocation graph it means the deadlock is present understood if cycle is not present then deadlock is not there understood that is the that is being done in first case where there is a single instance of each resource type where second case multiple instance of each resource type in that case the safety algorithm is applied okay that is the safety algorithm uh, related with the bankers algorithm is applied okay and with the help of the safety algorithm if the system is in the safe state or unsafe state that is get determined so if according to the safety algorithm system is in the safe state then deadlock is not there understood but if the according to the safety algorithm the system is in the unsafe state then definitely deadlock is there understood so this approach is applied for the deadlock detection so let's see in the details uh, case by case so first case as i told you okay case one where we have to consider or the operating system consider there are the single instance of each resource type is available okay so i already i explain you in case in case in this case for the deadlock detection we can run an algorithm to check for the cycle in the resource allocation graph so this is the resource allocation graph where there are the two resources are available and two process are available where process 1 is holding the resource 1 and process 2 is holding the resource 2 where process 1 is waiting for the resource 2 where the process 2 is waiting for the resource 2 so presence of cycle in this graph is the sufficient condition for the deadlock detection 
so you can see there is a cycle presence of present of cycle is there in this resource allocation graph this is your resource allocation graph for certain resources and the process so here you can easily see there is a presence of cycle in this resource allocation graph so in this graph you can see the resource 1 and the resource 2 are the single instances available understood and so you can see there is a cycle like r1 r1 to p1 okay r1 to p1 like i can show you here r1 to p1 then p1 to r2 then r2 to p2 and again p2 to r1 p2 to r1 okay so there is a cycle present okay there is a cycle present in this resource allocation graph which confirm that there is a deadlock is there which confirm that there is a presence of deadlock understood so with the help of this resource allocation graph with the help of this resource allocation graph we can confirm whether there is a presence of deadlock or not how we can confirm if the cycle is present like this then we can confirm that there is a presence of deadlock and that is our case one for the deadlock detection where in the case one what we are considering if resource is having the single instance here resource is having the single instance there is a only one resource uh, only one instance of uh, resource one and there is a only one instance of resource two means you can consider this as a this as a printer as a single instance is available and this as a, you can consider the scanner of which the single instance is single instance is, is available understood means only one printer is available only one scanner is available understood so that is our first case and in the first case you can see how we have detected the deadlock we have detected the deadlock uh, with the help of the resource allocation graph so in the if the if in the resource allocation graph there is a uh, presence of cycle then we can confirm that the deadlock is occurred okay now so let's see the second case so second case in the second case we are going to consider multiple instances of resources understood so in the previous slide already i told you what do we mean by the single instance of resource and what do we mean by the multiple instances of resource okay so here we are going to consider the multiple instances of resource understood multiple instances of resource in the sense there might be a presence of uh, suppose one resource is printer another resource is a scanner okay another resource you can consider as a cpu so there are the 10 scanners are present printer are present there are the five scanners are present there are the uh, two uh, cpus are present that is nothing but the consider as a multiple instances of resources so for the printer multiple instances are 10 for scanner 5 for cpu 2 okay so in this case in multiple instance resource type the uh, detection now in this case only using the detection of the cycle okay uh, is not enough for the uh, deadlock detection okay so in this case uh, along with the cycle along with the cycle also we have to confirm the other things also and by confirming that other things uh, then only we can uh, confirm that whether the deadlock has occurred or not okay so uh, regarding that now what another thing that we have to confirm okay what another thing that we have to confirm uh, in case of multiple instance of resource type okay so as i said here uh, only detection of the cycle which is not enough here for the deadlock detection now in case of the case one detection of the cycle was enough for the deadlock detection but here in case of the multiple instance of resources single instance of cycle uh, sorry uh, uh, the presence of the cycle is not enough okay so here then what extra thing we have to apply for the deadlock detection so as i said here we have to apply the safety algorithm what we have to apply the safety algorithm on the system by utilizing the or converting the resource allocation graph into the allocation matrix and the request matrix okay so the we have to apply in short we have to apply the banker's algorithm in the last lecture also i told you about the banker's algorithm and in the physically uh, 
practical we have conducted that time also in details we have discussed regarding the transfers algorithm so along with the detection of the cycle we have to apply the safety algorithm in the second case where we are considering the multiple instances of resources now what exactly is the banker's algorithm so as i as already in the last lecture uh, i told you the banker's algorithm how it works okay so, uh, in case of the deadlock avoidance i i told you so computer system has to maintain some database where it contain the information regarding the process how many process has created what is the requirement of that process in the sense how many resources that process is requiring how many resources already allocated to that process what how many resources are available what is the remaining need of that process for the resources that all the information has to be stored okay and banker's algorithm refer this information okay and then banker's algorithm check if the resources is applied to some if the resources is allocated to some process whether system will remain in the safe state or unsafe state so that banker's algorithm can tell us by applying some resources to the process or by allocating the some resource to the process whether our system will remain in the safe state or the unsafe state so that particular information is given by the banker's algorithm so by allocating some resource to the process if system is remaining in the safe state according to the banker's algorithm then the banker's algorithm permit the allocation of the resource to the process okay but if the banker's algorithm think that the system will remain unsafe if you apply if you allocate some resource to the process then in that case detection of the deadlock is being get done so here banker's algorithm is apply for the deadlock detection so when a new process is created in the computer system the process must provide all type of information to the operating system all type of information like the upcoming processes request uh, how many resources will be required for that processes okay then all this kind of information must be provided by that process okay to the operating system understood and based on this information based on this criteria the operating system decide which process sequence should be executed means to which process the resources should be get allocated and which process should be put in the waiting queue okay so so that the deadlock in the system will not occur and all these things being done by the operating system with the help of the banker's algorithm so that is the reason banker's algorithm is apply for the deadlock detection now banker's algorithm is apply and banker's algorithm will tell us whether the system will remain in the safe state or the unsafe state so if the banker's algorithm tells us the system will remain in the unsafe state then it means the deadlock detection has been done if the algorithm tell us that system will remain in the safe state then the resources can be allocated and it means the system will not go into the deadlock so there we can take the help of uh, there the operating system take the help of the banker's algorithm for the deadlock detection okay so here that is the reason the banker's algorithm is also known as the deadlock avoidance algorithm that we have discussed in the previous lecture or it can be also called as a deadlock detection in the operating system why it can be considered the deadlock detection algorithm because it tells us it tells us uh, by it tells us with the help of its uh, algorithmic strategy whether your system will remain in the safe state or the unsafe state and if this algorithm tells us your system will remain in the unsafe state then it simply means that the deadlock detection has been done so that is the reason the banker's algorithm is also referred as a deadlock detection algorithm in case of the operating system understood now so uh, in case of the banker's algorithm the different kind of information required okay so here i have mentioned when working with the banker's algorithm it requests to know about the four different kind of things so banker's algorithm requires the different kind of information that information i have uh, mentioned here like it require the how much pro, how much each process can request for the resource in the system that is being that is being uh, uh, maintained with the help of one matrix that is called as the max request matrix means how much resources the particular process can request that is the maximum re maximum resources that can be required by that particular process that is maintained with the help of the max request matrix then allocation request allocation resource matrix is also maintained 
where it contain the information like how much each process is currently holding the each resource in the system currently if there are the five process are there then that five process are currently holding how many resources so that information is maintained in the allocation resource matrix okay then regarding how many resources are currently available so that is being maintained with the help of the available resource matrix it represent the number of each resource currently available in the system and then last kind of matrix that is a need matrix where the information is uh, represented regarding what is the remaining need of resources of each process in the sense if there is a process p1 and process p1 currently allocated the two resource then how many other extra resource it can required what is their remaining need of the process p1 so that is being maintained by the need matrix so it is m, m by n matrix sequence representing number of remaining need of resource for each process how many remaining resources can be required by that particular process that information is maintained in the need matrix okay so bankers algorithm with the help of these four different kind of matrix information like max matrix allocation matrix available resource matrix and the need resource matrix the bankers algorithm works and bankers algorithm try to predict whether the system will be in the safe state or system will be in the unsafe state and according to that bankers algorithm does the detection of the deadlock when the system goes into the unsafe state it means the deadlock has been get detected and that kind of information is given by the bankers algorithm so in case of the multiple instances of resources in case of the multiple instances of resources just detection of the cycle is not enough but along with the detection of the cycle bankers algorithm we have to apply and in the bankers algorithm we apply the safety algorithm what we apply safety algorithm that safety algorithm in the next slide we will discuss so that safety algorithm will tell us whether the system is remain the safe state or the unsafe state so this is the uh, general overview of the safety algorithm i have shown you in the practical session also we have discussed it with the example okay so this is the safety algorithm with the help of that uh, bankers algorithm tell us whether system remain in the safe state or in the unsafe state so what exactly is this safety algorithm so uh, in the pseudo code i have mentioned if need is less than available means if remaining need of required resources for the process is less than available resource then execute process execute process in the sense allocate the resources to the process that is meaning of the uh, execute process okay and after allocating the resource to the process again calculate new available resources and how to calculate the new available resources that is available resources plus the resources which are being allocated understood if this is not the case if this is not the case then else if need is greater than the available then do then go to the else part and do not execute and go forward so only with the help of this simple algorithm that is this is called as a safety algorithm the bankers algorithm will tell us whether system in the safe state or the unsafe state okay and if the system is in the unsafe state it means the deadlock get detected so this is the, these are the two approach for the deadlock detection one approach is regarding the single instances of each resource type and second approach is regarding the multiple instances of each resource type where in the single instances if the cycle is detected in the resource allocation graph then we can see the deadlock has been detected and in case of the second approach where the multiple instance of each resource type along with the cycle detection that we have to apply the bankers algorithm uh, and in that bankers algorithm we apply the safety algorithm where that safety algorithm will tell us whether system in the system whether in the system deadlock is there or not okay now that is the first thing uh, we have discussed and that is the third deadlock handling strategies that is nothing but the called as a deadlock detection now last our start uh, la, uh, so in the deadlock after the deadlock detection what can be done so after the deadlock detection the operating system has to go for the recovery from the deadlock so that is the second stage in the deadlock detection and the recovery that is the second stage in the uh, deadlock handling strategy in case of the our uh, deadlock detection and the recovery so after the deadlock get detected next stage is nothing but the recovery from the deadlock okay so here i have mentioned 
when a detection algorithm determines that a deadlock exists then there are the several available alternatives are available okay so when the deadlock is get detected then there are the different approaches can be applied okay different approaches in the sense the operating system may allow the computer system to recover from the deadlock automatically or atom uh, operating system may allow the computer system to recover from the deadlock manually okay accordingly there are the two options are there which are being used to recover from the deadlock here i have mentioned there are the two options that are mainly used to break the deadlock or to get the recovery from the deadlock okay so in order to recover from the you know to recover the system from the deadlock the operating system consider at the resource level or the operating system consider at the process level understood so recovery from the deadlock is done by the operating system at the two levels okay so after the detection of the deadlock recovery from the deadlock can be done by the operating system at the two level so first level is at the process level and second level is at the resource level understood so at the process level uh, killing of the process one process at a time is done that in the detail we will see also that is the first case in case of the process level first case is what killing the one process at a time okay until the deadlock is not get eliminated and second approach in the process level is what eliminating or aborting all the deadlock process that is the second approach in case of the process level now at the resource level preemption strategy can be applied for the recovery from the deadlock preemption strategy in the sense forcefully taking the resources from the particular process that is the first case and at the second level that is the resource level recovery from the deadlock second approach can be applied that is nothing but the roll back to the previous state or roll back to the previous safe state understood so that deadlock recovery can be done so after the deadlock detection the operating system consider the two levels for the recovery from the deadlock one level is the process level another level is at the resource level okay so let's see it in the detail okay so recovery from the deadlock for the process level means recovery from the deadlock by taking the help of the process or by applying some strategies or the operation of the process so recovery from the deadlock at the process level so first case in that is the killing a process what killing a process killing a process in the sense kill a single process at a time so killing a process can solve our problem but uh here problem is that now multi there in when the deadlock occur there is a multiple process are there in the system then out of that multiple process which process to be killed first that is the most important decision has to be taken at this level so killing a process can solve a problem so first case is what killing a single process at a time now in this case the difficulty is what which process to be killed first so for that purpose this different criteria can be applied related with the killing the process so what what criteria can be applied to kill a certain process so criteria one is that low priority process will be killed first so if there are the two process p1 and the p2 and in that p1 is having the less priority as compared to the p2 then p1 will be killed first understood that is the one approach criteria next approach that can be apply to decide which process to be killed first that is the the percentage of process completion that is what the percentage of process completion means there are the two process p1 and the p2 p1 has completed 75% and p2 has completed 70 uh, 61% then which one can be killed first p2 can be killed first because p1 has completed most of its work as compared with the p2 so that is the second criteria can be applied in order to kill the process then third criteria can be apply in order to decide which process to be killed first that is what maximum number of resource holding process what maximum maximum number of resource holding process means if there are the two process p1 and the p2 p1 is holding how many resources 
twenty, and P two is holding the how many resources? Ten. Then which one to be killed first? P one should be get killed first because it is holding the maximum number of resources. And if you kill the P one, the twenty resources can be released, and because of that, deadlock can be get recovered. As compare with the ten resources here, so maximum resources can be get released if you kill the P one first. Okay. Fourth criteria can be applied to kill or to decide which process should be killed first in case of the this first uh, first case killing a single in single process at a time. So what is that maximum number of request is uh, resources requested? That is what maximum number of resource requested. If there are the two process P one and the P two. P1 has requested how many resources 10 P2 has requested how many resources 25 then it is better to kill the P2 first because it has requested 25 resources as compared with the 10 resources requested by the P1 so with the help of this different criteria the decision can be taken by the operating system to which process to be killed first in order to recover from the deadlock okay that is the first case where operating system operating system try to kill the single process at a time so apart from that second case is also there second uh, solution is also there that is what killing all the process which are involved in the deadlock so this is not the suggestible and the practical approach but it can be implemented if the deadlock is very serious in your computer system so killing all process will lead to the inefficiency in the system because if there are the 50 processes are running on your system which are come under the deadlock now that 50 process might have completed their some of the work and if you kill all the 50 process then that all the 50 process has to be executed again by the operating system so that will create the ineffic inefficiency in the system so that is the reason killing all the process is the most rarely approach which is utilized by the operating system to get recover from the deadlock because of that what will happen system may go into the inefficiency situation okay so killing a single process that can be considered as a better approach as compared with the killing all the process at a time you know to recover from the deadlock okay so that is the deadlock uh, detection and the recovery part at the process level okay that is the thing which you are discuss is now at the process level now recovery can be done at the resource level also so recovery can be done at the resource level also that is for process for resources okay so at the resource level also two approaches can be applied one approach is what prim the resource where what can be done where we can snatch snatch in the sense forcefully taking the resource from the process okay so prim the resource in the sense we can snatch one of the resource from the process and give it to the other resource with the expectation that it will complete the execution and will release their resources soon so forcefully taking the resource from particular process for example there is a p1 process and that p1 process resource r1 is allocated okay and there is another process p2 which requiring that resource r1 so printing the resource does what printing the resource take this resource r1 forcefully from the p1 and give it to the p2 so that is the one of the way of recovering from the deadlock that is what printing the resource okay now here uh, it is difficult to uh, decide okay which resource to be uh, choose okay while forcefully taking the resource from the particular process but printing the resource can uh, recover can give us the solution regarding the recovery from the deadlock okay and second approach uh, at the resource level that can be applied that is a roll back to the safe state okay because what happen uh, our computer system uh, whenever in the computer system certain process get created so in that case the, our system goes through the different stages our system pass through the different states okay whenever system goes into the deadlock state system never directly go into the deadlock state before that system comes from the different states okay like here you can see the step one state one state two state 3 and in the state 4 for example system goes into the deadlock state so before the four state where system goes into deadlock state there are the other states also understood so state state 2 state 3 or state 1 they might be considered as a safe state so system pass through the various state to go into the when before it goes into the deadlock state okay 
so the operating system can roll back the system to the previous state if you consider system uh, state 3 is a safe state and uh, the system has goes into the deadlock state in the fourth state then operating system can apply the approach where it roll back the state from the fourth state to the third state here i have mentioned the operating system can roll back the system to the previous state that is the safe state that is the third if you consider the third state as a safe state then operating system can roll back roll back means just go back to the previous state so operating system can roll back the system to the previous state that is the safe state so for this purpose operating system need to check need to do the checking at the different state every state operating system has to check whether state one is the safe state whether state two is the safe state like that understood and the moment operating system find uh, the system is in the deadlock then operating system can roll back okay and go into the previous state which is being considered as a safe state so that is the second approach at the resource level that is nothing but roll back to the safe state or go back to the safe state from the deadlock state so that system can recover from the deadlock so that is all about the deadlock detection and the recovery which is nothing but our third approach which is nothing but our third approach related with the deadlock handling strategies so third approach that we have discussed that is what deadlock detection and the recovery that is what deadlock detection and the recovery okay so here third deadlock handling strategy we have discussed now okay now fourth deadlock handling strategy we have to discuss that is the deadlock ignorance and this is the most practical approach which, which is being utilized uh, in the common computer users okay common computer users in the sense uh, the computer users like our students and teachers who use the computer system in the educational institute or the computer system which is being uh, utilized in the different shop medical okay where where the uh, computer system is being just utilized for the browsing purpose and to do the normal operation calculation purpose for example uh, in the educational institute we utilize the computer to do the programming to learn the programming etc etc so deadlock ignorance is the most practical approach which is utilized in the which is the, which is the most practical approach utilized by the most of the end users of the computer system so that is the reason it is mentioned here this is our fourth deadlock handling strategy so deadlock ignorance means what let the deadlock occur don't worry even if the deadlock occur that is the simple straight forward strategy of deadlock ignorance same thing i have mentioned here the deadlock ignorance is the most widely used approach among all the mechanism this is being used by the many operating system for their end users so windows operating system linux operating system also utilize this approach that is what deadlock ignorance approach okay so in this approach the operating system assume that deadlock will never occur what here the operating system designer like windows and the linux they have consider that deadlock will never occur and even if the deadlock occur the end user can simply ignore the deadlock that is the simple approach here okay so this is the best approach suitable for the single and end user system where user utilize the system only for the browsing and all other normal stuff that i already told you okay so general users of the computer never has to, has to worry about the deadlock understood because even if the deadlock occurs in our system we don't have to uh, worry about it because it is not going to harm uh, or it is not going to do any major effect on the uh, working of the computer okay or it is not going to do any kind of loss of the end users of the computer because we are we are all doing the normal operation on the computers okay now in case of uh, our normal users when you have experienced such kind of things like number of times we, we we must have experienced the thing like when you are working with the computer at certain situation computer stop working means even if you click at some position it doesn't get click even if you try to uh, close the some files never get close okay so means your system get completely hanged what happen your system get completely hanged 
that is nothing but the situation of our deadlock in case of the general users of the computer understood now in that in that case what you do when your system get completely hang not getting click anywhere not getting uh, not uh, even the you cannot able to close any files folders or even you, you are not able to close any window understood then in that case what you do you just do what you just simply restart your system and that is nothing but the simple approach of deadlock ignorance what you do what you do when your system doesn't work means not getting click anywhere nothing is happening in that case what you do you just, you just simply restart the system so that is nothing but the simple approach of what deadlock ignorance and that is the suggested approach by the window windows operating system and the linux operating system related with the normal users that don't they do they need they there is a no need to worry about the deadlock even if you even if it is occur in your system understood understood so in case of the normal users the generally deadlock occurs one out one one time out of the 100 times okay how many times one times out of the 100 times and for that one time it is not necessary to handle the deadlock mechanism or to apply the deadlock mechanism that we have discussed like deadlock prevention deadlock avoidance deadlock detection so no need to apply this kind of approach when the deadlock occurs in case of the general users of the computer understood because generally that kind of hanging situation of computers comes in the life of our normal users of the computer it is very rare it occurs uh, very rarely understood just i said just it is mentioned here one out of the 100 times okay one out of the 100 times understood and in and for that one out of the 100 times if you try to apply this deadlock handling mechanism like deadlock prevention avoidance by applying different um, uh, algorithms then what happen because of that the performance of the system get decreases okay if we apply the deadlock mechanism all the time if deadlock happens one of the 100 times understood so that is completely completely unnecessary to use the deadlock handling mechanism all the time okay so that kind of mechanism can be applied which kind of mechanism deadlock prevention deadlock uh, avoidance deadlock detection and recovery so that mechanism can be applied when the computer system is being utilized for the some sensitive work okay for in case of the real time operating system so in that case the this mechanism of deadlock handling can be applied like deadlock prevention deadlock uh, avoidance deadlock detection recovery so that three mechanism can be applied for that kind of system but in case of the normal users of the computer because in the world the computer system normally get utilized by the normal users 90% of normal users computer system get utilized by the 90% of normal users which are doing the normal stuff on the computer normal work on the computer like browsing the different sites uh, doing the calculation etc etc okay so for this kind of work there is a no need to apply the deadlock handling mechanisms like which mechanism deadlock prevention deadlock avoidance deadlock detection and the recovery because in order to apply this mechanism you have to you have to you have to uh, uh, spend lot of the money understood you have to spend lot of the money these are the costly approach these are the costly deadlock handling handling mechanisms okay there is a need to apply the complex algorithms understood so in case of the normal users when the deadlock occurs your system get hang to hang completely in this type of system the users has to simply restart the computer in case of the deadlock as i said so you just simply restart the computer and then your computer can get your you can get your computer work in the normal way so this approach so this which approach deadlock avoidance approach is a normally suggested by the windows and the linux operating system for the normal users okay so this strategy involves ignoring the concept of deadlock and assuming that it has not occurred so simply ignore it by doing what simply ignore it by doing restarting the computer understood so this strategy help to avoid the extra overhead of handling the deadlock so this strategy avoid to apply that kind of mechanism that we have discussed first deadlock prevention second deadlock avoidance and third deadlock detection and the recovery no need to apply such kind of mechanisms for handling deadlock when the deadlock occurs in the computer system which is utilized by the normal users understood so 
Windows and the Linux uses this strategy, and it is the mostly widely used method. And this is also called as the ostrich approach. What is this ostrich approach? Ostrich approach is what let the things happen. Means what? Let the deadlock happens. We are not going to handle the deadlock. We are just going to do what? We are just going to ignore it by restarting the computer. Understood? Because restarting the computer is not going to harm any any. It is not going to affect on the uh, normal users. It is just simply take the uh, uh, some some number of minutes. Yes or no? It will just simply take the some one one or two minutes to restart the computer, and then everything will be the normal. Okay. So that is all. Uh, this approach of ignoring something. What ignoring something in the sense? Let the thing let 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 it happens. Let it happen. Whatever the bad is happening, understood. So that is the simple approach of deadlock ignorance. Understood. So generally, it is being technically referred as the ostrich approach. Okay. So that is the fourth and important approach. That is the deadlock ignorance, where what we are imagining or what we are pretending that there is a no problem. System got hang means deadlock has occurred. There is a no problem. Okay, we can just restart the system and everything will will work as a normal. Okay, so this is the easiest way to deal with the deadlock problem. Okay, so this algorithm says that, or this approach says that, stick your head in the stand and pretend there is there is a no problem. Means so that is called as the ostrich approach. Stick your head in the stand in the sense, so sticking your hand, sticking your head in the stand. Uh, in the sand, sand in the sense, upon uh, sand la Marathi madhe walu mantu. Madhe walu madhe doka galun theva. Ata walu madhe doka gatil nantar tumal maite ke apne doona madhe walu jau shakte. Still, still you have to imagine that. Tari tumi walu madhe doka galun theva la. Tari tu mala imagine kya karay se? Kya problem na? Nothing is happening bad with you. Understood? So that is approach. Means you are ignoring that problem there. So same approach is applied here. Okay, same approach is applied here. That is the avoid the deadlock. Uh, sorry ignore the deadlock so this strategy suggests to ignore the deadlock because deadlock occurs very rarely kadhi tari deadlock occur hoto normal user cha bapti deadlock kadhi tari occur hoto okay one of the 100 time uh, one out, uh, one out of 100 times or one of the 1000 times understood so <coughs> this strategy suggests to ignore the deadlock because deadlock occurs rarely but the system get crashes because of the number of other uh, reasons like hardware failure complex error operating system bugs etc etc understood so even this approach says that even if the deadlock occur even if even if your system get hang do, do not there is a no need to worry about that you need not to do the any panic about that you just simply do what ignore it by restarting the computer understood and this is the last point i am going to explain you why this is this strategy is considered as a good strategy out of the all the strategies why this strategy considered as a good or reasonable strategy reason behind that what deadlock occurs very rarely manje kadhi tari deadlock occur hoto cost of prevention is very high manje kay jar tumhi ta if you try to apply that three strategy which deadlock prevention deadlock avoidance deadlock detection and the recovery if you try to apply these strategies the cost of applying this strategy is very high Time required to apply this strategy also very high. Understood. Another important reason for applying the deadlock ignorance strategy is what? It is being recommended by the popular operating system operating system making companies. Unix and the Windows are suggesting this kind of approach. That is what avoiding uh, ignoring the deadlocks. Okay. So another reason is what deadlock in case of the modern computer system occurs very rarely because. Resources are available plentifully. Resources are available plentiful in the sense now RAM is available in very high amount, CPU available in a very high configuration, disk space is also available in the high amount. So generally deadlock occurs rarely in case of the modern computer system. So deadlocks for such resources are rarely occur. Deadlock typically handled by the rebooting the computer. Rebooting in the sense, re simply restarting the computer, you can easily handle the. deadlock instead of applying this costly strategies which is not required in case of the normal users of the computer this strategy can be applied in case of computers where the computer is doing the sensitive processing or sensitive work understood 
so that is all about the deadlock handling strategies okay so all the four strategy we have finished now okay first was the deadlock prevention deadlock avoidance second third deadlock detection recovery and the fourth deadlock ignorance which strategy the normal users like us are following and like us 90% users of the computers following this strategy that's a deadlock ignorance these three strategies are very costly to apply these are very complex to apply that is the reason they are this strategy rarely get utilized and where it is get utilized where the sensitive work is get carried out where missing a single instance missing a single minute while processing is also the very uh, also is also the very wastage of time is all, uh, missing a single minute of processing by the computer is also considered as a very uh, very uh, uh, wasteful wasteful of time then in that case these kind of approaches can be applied to handle the deadlock but in case of the normal users this approach is very good okay that we have already discussed so that is all about the deadlock handling strategies okay i hope all of you have understood this part and if you have any doubt you can comment in the comment section okay thank you all of you